Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to our next movie reaction. Alright, so you guys know I recently put a poll up to see which of a handful of movies you guys might want me to react to next, and the winner was Parasite. So that is the film we'll be starting today. Um, for those of you guys that voted for some other films or gave recommendations in the comments, don't worry, I'll be doing other reactions um, as well. So I definitely am interested in all of those movies that I listed and some of the ones that you guys mentioned too I looked up and seemed kind of cool. So I'm accumulating a list. <laughs> but this was the big winner um, by a quite large margin, so this is what we are starting with first. So Parasite, this was a Academy Award winning film for Best Picture, which was an incredibly big deal, um, given that it is not just a foreign film, but a non-English uh, speaking film. Um, so my knowledge about this movie is fairly small. The description kind of seems to be describing it as comedy thriller drama, which sounds confusing, but interesting. Um, so what I mostly know about it is that pretty much everybody that saw it said it was fantastic, but also surprising, and there were things they didn't see coming. So on the one hand, it's kind of like you don't want to know that there's things that people wouldn't see coming in the movie because that kind of sets you up ahead of time. And I feel like sometimes that takes away some of the shock. Um, but hopefully not. I don't know what the things are that I should not expect to see coming. Um, so hopefully it'll still just be really fun and exciting and surprising whatever happens. So I'm looking forward to checking it out. Let's look at it together. Here we go. Hanging our socks up to dry? Is that what this is? Like a little sock mobile? What? It'll kill you! You're not supposed to breathe that in! Yes! You should shut it! This is true. Whoa. Looking pretty clean to me. But, uh, um, I'm trying to figure out the geography of this because he went in what seemed to be the, like the, like the barred gate. Oh shit. But then he like went up in order to get to the house and it was a whole like greenscape area so are they like on top of a little hill? Uh. Um. Oh my god! It's like, oh. <laughs> oh my god. 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 What is she doing? So, she put her underwear? Oh god. 
체력 감동 막 이러면서 <웃음> 놀라 씨발 아니 뭐 인터넷에서 미술 치료? 뭐 검색한 거쌀좀 풀었더니 She tried to get that guy fired so her dad can take over the driving job. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> I mean, yeah. He's, he's driving pretty smoothly there. The man's just got his coffee, he's not spilling at all. This is gonna be the plan? Oh no! This is the plan? Oh, this is... This is so shitty! Oh my god, they wrote a script! They wrote an actual script! <laughs> Take it down a notch! Okay, this is pretty funny. This is scary of acting lessons. This is the plan. <laughs> I guess she said that it was like rashes and stuff. It, the allergic reaction wasn't like anaphylaxis, but you never know. It's going a bit, a bit far for your scheme here. Oh no! <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> it's horrible, but really, really just so funny. <laughs> it doesn't even look like blood. Oh my god. Don't go snooping through her room. Don't be a dick. I act like that's the worst thing they've done. Bro. You guys might be getting a little too comfortable. What if they came home early? Definitely a different view than they usually have. Oh my god, what happened to her face? What what's happened to her face? No. What the? <laughs> what is this? There's a room? There's another basement? There's a sub... Sub basement? What the hell is this? 
Her husband? <laughs> Not, what are you all doing? Oh my god. What? She had her husband. Yes, what happened to your face? Hiding in this like bunker basement? <laughs> oh wait, no, he said that he, she eats enough for two people, right? <laughs> the previous owner! <laughs> well, now you know each other's secrets. Ah! Blackmail fodder! Dad! Oh! <laughs> yes, this is the Cuban Missile Crisis. <laughs> what the hell are they doing? Holy shit! <gasps> Eight minutes! Eight minutes to clean all of this up! Alright, you guys all gotta come to some terms right now. Oh my god, you're just pushing! Underneath the couch? Is she dead? Because that looked like a fall and a collision that could kill someone. Holy shit. Holy fucking shit. Oh my god. Respect! 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 What? Send? He thinks he's communicating with him through Morse code through the lights? <laughs> the man's out of his mind! He's out of his- Oh! Oh! He's out of his mind! He's out of his mind! <laughs> 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 
Why did he look so creepy? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was the. Whoa, what? He had a seizure because of that? Wait, the kid has seizures? So that tr Now they gotta try and sneak out of the house. But then, like, they're also gonna have to try and sneak clean all the shit that's underneath the couch at some point. Get the fuck out of there! That kid's gonna see them. So now they're just gonna have to stay under that table? <gasps> oh no! Oh god damn it! They're gonna have to stay under that table all night long? Man, their backs are gonna hurt the next day. Oh, this is shitty. This is shitty. Oh god. It's the wet, it's the sub basement. <sighs> This is some shitty rich people stuff. Oh. oh, this is awful. This is awful. It sucks so much. What they were just doing and then look at what's happened. Further down. Wow, this whole thing. Visually, this whole thing is crazy. How far? Oh my god. Oh my god. Like, the, the, with how they live at like the bottom of the city versus the house, like the top. Flooding. Ah, oh, sewage water. Oh. Damn it. Oh my god. Oh my god, is she dying? Is she going into anaphylactic shock? She has a concussion. Oh my god! Oh my god! Mm-hmm. 
That's certainly true. But... It doesn't matter. It still matters. Jesus. Okay, he's falling apart. Oh no! Oh shit! Oh shit! Bro, behind you! Bro! Oh god! And this guy was already out of his mind too! Oh my god. He's got a fucking bell on him! Did she die? <gasps> oh my god! He kept laughing, his brain is all fucked up. Where the hell is the father? In jail for murder? Like, cause... Jesus. Oh my God. <laughs> Try to buy the house. Oh my God. 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 Oh my God.
<laughs> okay, well, that was Parasite. I'm a little lost for words at the moment, to be honest. Um, I will absolutely say, just though, just to start off, um, even knowing that there was, like, twists and the movie was supposed to, like, take a turn um, and be shocking, I definitely was not prepared for the things that actually ended up happening. <laughs> Honestly, from the moment that the old housekeeper showed up and she was like all beat up and laughing hysterically and acting real crazy, from that moment until the end, the movie was absolutely insane. It, it was it was a wild ride. Um, the film as a whole was fantastic. Uh, I. I can definitely see why people were saying it, it was like a comedy thriller drama. Like, you can't really categorize it as anything because it certainly feels like there was a complete shift at that point where the old housekeeper showed up, you know? Because a lot of the, the beginning, the beginning of the movie that before that part um, was very, very focused on setting up the the scheme so to speak the family's kind of plan coming to fruition and it was very humorous honestly it was really funny i was just laughing at a lot of things i would say most of that point was very comedic um and then it just the the whole tone it just took a turn like first into kind of like the absurd um intense I would say absurd intense because first you're just like shocked at the fact that there is this man living in the basement that there was a secret bunker basement and he'd been living there for over four years and she'd been hiding him away and the shock of that and then the like suspense and weird tension of how they all kind of just got at each other's throats and were threatening each other and they were kind of making them kneel with their arms up in the air and kind of basically sort of like torturing them for fun, which was fucked up. But then that devolved into full-scale fighting and them dragging them into into the, the bunker and causing the injury to the former housekeeper that would actually end up killing her and just locking them down there. And it was all happening at the same time as the crazy scene of them trying to clean up and then hide because because the uh the parks were coming home early and that whole thing was just like a a moment of shock into an incredibly suspenseful tense sort of uh film and then i would say from hmm, i'm trying to figure out the point Probably the point where um, where the three of them actually the get out of the house, they've escaped and they're running away and it's raining and the flood is about to start and they're just running and running down, down, and they keep going down all these different crazy staircases to get to the lower and lower and lower into, into the, the city, into the part where they live. And discover that everything that they had that was left of, of their home, the little possessions that they did have in this kind of sub-basement that they lived, was all flooded out with sewage, was destroyed. From that point on, it just became really depressing. It was just incredibly depressing. It was just a very dark, somber movie from that point on. So yeah, the, the, the shift were pretty dramatic um, in the tone of the movie and the way that it felt watching it, the way that you felt. Um, I I have to say, I, I think I think it's interesting the way that they did that, that they're literally like going down all the steps further and further and further 
to their house at the bottom of this, basically what ended up becoming a floodplain into their sub basement. And then the contrast with the Parks house, which I even mentioned, I think at the beginning when he got there um, and they opened the like gate, he had to walk up in order to get to the actual house. He had to go up stairs which I was like, I was a little bit confused as to what the actual landscape was, how it was organized in such a way, because that's not something that I'm necessarily used to seeing around here. And I don't know if that's a common um, housing structure there in Korea for at least among like wealthier people. But I think it's very interesting that they had that contrast between the going up and the going down, because you see a lot of contrasts throughout the film. Like I was also mentioning how it jumped right from them, the Kims, basically pretending this was their house and having a nice little fantasy happy time in there, lounging around and drinking and laughing and running around outside and fantasizing and talking about belonging there or not. And the stark shift from that to just a short amount of time later, being back in the sub-basement and just like up to their chest in sewage and I mean, it's just, it was horrifying. But then if you also think about it, in addition to that, there's also not just the sub-basement that they live in at the bottom of all the steps in the city, but the, the actual bunker that was below the basement that, you know, there's an even lower level that's completely hidden away and that's completely obscured to the wealthy people's view, which is crazy but I do think it's really interesting the way they did that and visually it was cool and like metaphorically it's also interesting but yeah I I got from that point on it was just really fucking depressing I feel like the former housekeeper and her husband were kind of out of their minds at that point uh I feel like if they and the Kims had just been able to calmly talk, maybe things wouldn't have gotten to that level, even though even him living in the basement to begin with was incredibly insane. But they were all doing something and, you know, they were all poorer people just trying to survive and doing what they had to do to survive, including completely conning um, the parks and then living off of them in secret. And you can't necessarily say that one is even wor was worse than the other. But I do, I don't know. I do feel like they were going kind of crazy, but at the same time you have to feel bad for them, right? Because she had lived there since even before the parks did and they were suffering. And when she showed up there, you know, he had basically been wasting away and starving in the basement and where he'd already gone insane. And like her face was all bruised and like something obviously terrible had been happening to her because she, she was out there and she was having to make money somehow and she was saying how creditors were searching for him years later so I wouldn't be surprised. And like the idea of them being like loan sharks and being like an actual life threat, not just like debt, like they talked about having bunkers, not just for North Korea, potentially, but in case creditors bust down your house. That is wild to me. That is wild. And I don't, I don't know if I would have really thought through the implications of that if it hadn't been, if I had watched this prior to watching Squid Game, where they literally had people talking about, you know, how they were going to have to sell their organs off and creditors were just going to take, steal their organs and I, yeah, in order to pay off debts. But like the severity of the life and death nature of, of that sort of debt. Yeah, so I had, I had to feel badly for them as well, you know, it, and just the horror of that kind of like montage -y sort of scene where 
he was tied up down there trying to get out of his restraints because he could see his wife literally dying on the floor from her head being hit. And then at the same time, you see the their, their home flooding the sub-basement scenes and all, all the... Yeah, that was just incredibly depressing. I felt bad for everybody. I felt bad for all of them in that situation, even though they'd all done bad things. Yeah. And, uh, ah, like, I'm, I'm not surprised that the husband, you know, after watching his wife die and being locked down there again like that and not knowing what they were going to even end up doing, I'm not surprised that he lost his mind and went out there. I thought he was just going to go for the mother because of how his wife kept repeating her name and, and was, you know, she's the one that killed me basically, but I didn't see him killing her. That surprised me. That was, oh my God. And so, yeah. And so then the other thing you have to think about is the father snapping. Like I was saying, you could keep seeing and like they had the, the close-ups of his face as you could see in the times when he was like, like, it was building up like he wasn't able to take it anymore. Everything that his family lived through and everything that he was going through and the insults that he was feeling were being addressed. And he just lost it and, and just stabbed him. He just lost it and stabbed him. And I feel like it was just the combination of all those things building up and then the same, that at that moment, they were both trying to save their children's lives. So you can't really blame either of them. But what Mr. Kim saw was Mr. Park basically saying, leave her there and come drive me to take my son to the hospital and she's there bleeding out and so i mean that had to be like the final straw he was already in this completely nihilistic phase based on the conversation at the temporary shelter but that oh my god and the thing is one thing that i actually that i do quite like about this movie is there were a couple of instances okay where you feel like you kind of feel like the parks are assholes in the sense especially everything surrounding the idea of the smell you know when they're talking about the smell and they're stuck under the table having to listen to it but then you know when he brought it up with her at other points and 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 the like not get too close not cross boundaries sort of thing there's there's some definite like uh some looking down on people having to do with class especially because the smell thing is something they they literally can't do anything about if you're living in that sort of sub basement there's mold you're next to the street where a guy comes and fucking pisses every single day um i guess when it when it's flooding around there obviously sewage is going all over the place there's dampness you just always living with certain things that you have to there's nothing you can do about it no matter how much you clean yourself or do your laundry it's just gonna like seep into everything so there really isn't anything that they can do and it's like this this taint that's stuck on you that comes from poverty and to have somebody that's so like wealthy and fortunate in that regard criticizing you for those things seems really disgusting so I can understand and, and that makes you feel like okay they're kind of assholes right and for the things like when they're setting up for the party and they're not helping and they're saying oh be quiet don't disturb the sun but at the same time one of the things I really liked about this movie is other than some like snobby asshole statements like that, which they probably don't even really fully understand like how assholey those things are to think. They weren't like stereotypically terrible rich people. They weren't evil. They weren't going out of their way to hurt other people. They actually, you know, they, they were treating their employees like, like help and not like necessarily like people some of the time which isn't great but other times they were very friendly with them they were paying a lot they weren't like cruel or vicious people it, it wasn't like a yeah 
they just seem like normal people. And even they had Mr. Kim sometimes talking about how Mr. Park was also trying his best as a father and a husband. And you could see how much Mrs. Park was worried about her children, even though she wasn't the brightest. She was doing everything that she could for them and was really proud of them. And so that's the certain one. Of, one thing that I actually do like about this is there's things about everybody that's not great things that they've done that's not great but also reason to feel badly for them and there's no there's no clear-cut villain here other than the society as a whole the system that leads to that sort of poverty that leads to things like people having to hide in fucking bunkers to avoid possibly being killed by creditors and to whole families having to try to con their way into getting any sort of way to earn money because on their own, you know, no matter how smart their son is, no matter how talented artistically their daughter is, and clearly they're all smart people, they aren't able to, like, get themselves out of it. And so that is the only sort of actual villain in the piece, and the tragedy of it is that all of these people end up turning on each other Yeah, and it's that's what it really is. It's just a tragic situation and it says a lot. It's like a pretty strong societal indictment because I'm sure there's a lot of people that mostly feel bad for the Kims and I definitely get that, especially the Parks, you know, they're wealthy and everything, but and the kind of asshole -ish behaviors, but the, the Kims did some pretty shitty things too. Like they had other working class people lose their jobs, they tarnished their reputations, they did seriously fucked up shit in order to con their way in, and they were talking about continuing to take advantage of them for who who knows how long to, I mean, they were, but then is it really taking advantage when they were, they were doing the jobs and they were doing it well? See, see this is what I'm saying, it's, it's a complicated story and there's no villains, there's just a whole bunch of people trying to live their lives and there's some who are more fortunate than others. And that fortunate situation can be something that makes them totally oblivious to the, the lives of those less fortunate and, and maybe to their own position, but doesn't necessarily make them bad people. It certainly doesn't make them deserving of, of him being killed, um, them having to lose their father like that. And I don't even know if the son survived the seizure Yeah, so it's really, it's just, a, it's very tragic, but also it's a sign to me of a very well uh, written and constructed story that you can feel sympathy and compassion for everybody in the situation and everyone also has some level of their own blame. And then the other thing that I just want to touch upon, they showed him kind of fantasizing at the end about buying the house so that he and his mom could move in and then his dad can come up from the basement and they can just live with him there and he'll like never be found and but that's even tragic too because you know that's never going to happen there's no fucking chance that that is ever going to happen right putting aside even if he succeeded in becoming super rich and finding a way to buy that house it's not like the police are just gonna give up, I mean, you would think, on trying to catch a murderer. So if they were to move into that house where their father committed a murder, where his father committed a murder, like, people are gonna know that, and you would think that, you know, police would be coming around, and I, I don't know, so even from, like, a practical standpoint, it seems like a fantasy, but the much more depressing part of it is that f just realistically, he's not going to end up being rich enough to do that. He has the intelligence that he could get into a well-paid position. You know, the, the Mr. Parkey was an architect. That's not something that would have been outside of his reach, but... I mean, clearly he was already in a position where he wasn't, he didn't have the funds to go to university and start down that path even before any of this happened. But now he would have even less money because now they don't have two of the four family members bringing funds in. And in addition to that, now he's 
been convicted of crimes, which I'm sure makes it harder for you to get a well-paying job. Or I don't know what the situation is in Korea in terms of in South Korea in terms of acceptance into universities if criminal records will prevent you from getting in. But I kind of have a feeling that it might be significant. So he, it just seems like he's just back in the same situation where he's trapped in the same station. And so there won't be any like his fantasy of that is not going to come true is just the what I have to think and uh, I, I I feel like I've talked too much now this is this is gonna be really long video but I think there's a lot more like I'd want to sit down and think about this movie a lot more there's a great deal to it but it was an excellent film so it won Academy Award I think it certainly deserves that sort of praise I'm very glad I watched it so thank you to everybody who voted um, and encouraged me to do this reaction yeah lots to think about but all right i'm gonna wrap this up here guys thank you so much for joining me hopefully i will see you next time bye